The big crash occurred on the 4th of March 2016. Check out all the action as we process our beautiful Shiraz fruit on a 38 degree day. It's one Dakota crash day. Got someone on the fork, he's uh, taken our cold whole bunches that have been in a reefer overnight. Minus three degrees, just chilling them down. What he's done here is taking them from the bins, tipping them into a receivable bin here. And then they'll go down into the uh, crusher. Go through as largely whole berries. And uh, we'll take those back to the garage. Wind decoded HQ and make it all happen. It's a beautiful thing. Just going in. Yep. So the wine decoder Shiraz is going through the system here. You can see the fruit being tipped into the top. It goes through that sort of triangle pyramid thing, which is a receivable bin, and comes down into a very gentle distemmer. It does, has no rollers, so you're getting lots of whole berries. And that's just getting pumped into the grey bin that you see on the right there. Through a straight line, very gentle pump. You can see the stalks coming out the end here. We'll go a bit closer for you to check it out. Uh, this is what comes out of the crusher. It's uh, very gentle, some nice whole berries, a little bit of juicing occurring. Just going through the pump. All happy days. Looks lovely. So, at the end of the crusher here, you see the stalks coming out. So all the fruit's gone into that pump that you saw before, and we just see the uh, end result: just loose stalks coming out of the system and uh, accumulating in the bin here. So the wind decoder bathtub Shiraz is coming out the hose and uh, heading into the tub. The truck has landed at wind decoded HQ. Time to bucket. Hey, so it's one decoded crushing day, and we've got three different ferments going on with the same Shiraz fruit. So I thought I wanted to run a, that by you a little bit. So one of the things that we're going to do in one of the ferments is throw stalks in, but we're going to do it in a tea bag, a giant tea bag. So we've started here wrapping it in muslin. We've got a heap of stalks in there, and we're going to throw that in the bottom of one of the ferments. Uh, actually, two of the ferments. But the difference being that one of them we may macerate depending on how the tannins feel as we're going along. And when I mean macerate, I mean post-fermentation maceration. So leaving the wine on skins after it's finished its primary fermentation. So ferment one, on stalks, probably pressed off when dry. Ferment two, on stalks, uh, probably macerated, but with both of those, the ability to take those stalks out. In the third ferment, we've actually got some whole bunches. So we've got about 30% whole bunches that we're going to throw in there and we're going to see how that goes. The reason we're doing all these different fermentation techniques is because this is the first time we've seen this particular fruit and we want to get a, an idea of how it behaves under different circumstances. We're going to have to be pretty agile, we're going to have to keep tasting, we're going to have to keep checking what's going on with it over time and if need be, pull these stalks out, if need be, press early uh, and conversely, if it's looking really good under maceration, Continue maceration and, and put, pushing, the, uh, pushing the boundaries with that, that fruit. So we look forward to giving you some more updates as we go along. Once these babies are, are full, it's 36 degrees today, so we're going to try and get these full now and try and make sure they're, they're kept cool. So until the next episode, thanks for watching from Wine Decoded and look forward to sharing a bit more with you. Cheers. Bye for now. 140 buckets later, we'd finally finished unloading the fruit and had it all safe and sound in our bathtubs. Backbreaking on a 38 crazy degree day. Finally, we could celebrate with beer. Woohoo! The tea bags were in with their stalks. The ferments were ready to have the lids put on. But first, cooling with 225 kilos of ice.